episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knit-wearing crochet designer. My name is Carmen, and you can you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and I will list my website and my Patreon right here. This week, I actually have a lot to talk about, but I'm going to leave some things out, you know, things that I've just swatched for and things that I might have done a couple rows on. Uh, so I'm, I think I'm going to cut it up into a couple of videos, but this will be the main podcast episode uh, where I have two finished objects and one new cast on. And one of those finished objects is for my knit along or the sock along, uh, which is the shoe matching sock along. And it's going on right now in my Facebook group, which is New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew. Feel free to come and join us over there. Um, I really love seeing people in my Facebook group just sharing um, their projects and uh, now for the sock along as well. But I will show that finished object later. Uh, first off is a finished object that is on my lap right now and it is so soft <laughs> and it is a pet bed for Momo and I kind of hinted to this in the last podcast episode two weeks ago where I was holding the yarn so I had the stonewashed XL yarn and the furry tails yarn which I don't know where, where the, the ball is, but here is the finished pet bed. <laughs> Look at how big it is. It's huge. It's huge. I can even use it as a pillow myself. And, you know, I will because it is so soft. It is so soft. And um, so a little story um around this pad bed because it was trial and error um not on the crocheting part but on the part that you know is mo actually going to use this pet bed yes or no because you know cats um and i did not specifically design this for cats although Maybe, okay, maybe I did, but, uh, you know, it's, it's quite big. It's uh, 60 centimeters, um, diameter. Uh, so I think most cats will fit on here <laughs> and small dogs as well. And, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe even bigger dogs if they like sitting on smaller, <laughs> smaller things, but also you can just have it on, on the sofa. I mean. Um, right, so I, there's, there are two sides to this pillow, and uh, one side is stonewashed XL, and one side is Scipio's furry tails, and this color is notoriously difficult to, uh, to get right on camera. I've tried it with you know, taking pictures, and it always shows up as this kind of gray-green, where it is actually, it's more green than gray. <laughs> and, you know, in real life, it actually really matches this color, but on camera, it always kind of seems as if it's contrasty. So, yeah, I... Uh, I don't know. Um, I can't, I also can't really explain it. It's, it's just, you know, it's minty green, but there are a lot, a lot of shades of minty green. But if you don't like minty green, you can get Scapey's Furry Tails in a bunch of colors. Uh, I chose this one because it looks really nice with Momo's eye color, um, because she also has a kind of green, um, green eye collar. Sometimes it's like olive green when when she looks into the sun and sometimes it's more like a jade uh, minty green. So yeah, I, I just really like this. And uh, so this is Scapius Furry Tails, um, which comes in balls of 100 grams and 57 meters. Um, so it's really bulky. Uh, I used three balls and this is the colorway Tinkerbell, which is 983. And 
then stone washed XL I think I used four balls but then when I weighed this part it was 206 grams so I put five balls for sure I like to be sure but it might be possible with just four um, and stone wash XL is available in 50 gram balls um, I forgot oh here it is um, and that is 75 meters so 57 meters and 75 uh, so this one I crocheted on one hook size smaller I think I used four millimeter and five millimeter or five and six I'll have to check the pattern it will be in the pattern for sure uh, which will be out on October 4th which is World Animal Day see that's that's why I'm publishing it on that day uh, and this is 70% cotton one 70% uh, cotton 30% acrylic and the uh, furry tails I think is 100% polyester uh, so even though you know, you might be super tempted to make a blanket or clothing out of this for babies. Please don't because it is not uh, fire safe. So um, yeah, please, please don't um, because it will melt and attach to the skin and it's just really, yeah. Uh, but you know, for, for pillows, it is completely fine. Uh, what else? Oh, right. This is colorway Fosterite, but it's actually, so stonewashed yarns are all named after uh, like minerals or crystals and the actual crystal is called Forsterite. So, uh, yeah, small typo and it's colorway name or, or number 866. So, uh, yeah, I made one circle for the top, one for the bottom and then sew them together um, and while I was just well I had the the circles separately um, and I had finished the fluffy one and I put it on the chair and Momo was a big fan she was uh, sitting on top of it and like I say massaging it but uh, as I shared a video of this uh, a lot of people said oh she's making biscuits or making puddings and I thought oh that's so cute so um, I thought oh that must be the actual English way of uh, saying that so um, yeah so she seemed to really really like it and uh, I was sewing it together um, without the cushion insert sewing it together and then I had it like this and she was also just sitting on top of that and <laughs> not letting me finish the cushion so it was like okay this is great um, and then when I had the the cushion in there and um, I laid it out for her and she was like eh. uh, and I put her <laughs> on top of the cushion and she would just walk right off um, and then I had the idea of sewing the dimple in here so it's like a donut cushion because uh, it was really like um, I don't know how to explain it but now she she kind of has a nest in here and I think it is still a little <laughs> oops almost dropped it I think it is still a little bit too bulky so I might have to like uh, sit on it a couple times um, <laughs> to make it flatter but um, she seems to really like it now uh, now that she has a nest and uh, still she will only massage it and not sit on it but um, I think we're getting there I think we're getting there the first time I had to bribe her on here with uh, snacks um, and she was like really hesitant, like really like, uh. <laughs> she was trying to whack the, the snack out of my hand. Um, yeah, but, uh, I think, I think it's working. So that's just a word of warning that even if you put a whole lot of love into making this, your pet may not want it and, you know, um, dogs are easier than cats I think in that way but uh, yeah cats can be really uh, uh, picky <laughs> and also if you have like bunnies 
staying indoors with you. I think they would really like this too. Um, I know a couple people who have bunnies as pets inside the house, so yeah. But uh, and it is fully washable, of course, because I know pets. So um, yeah. So you can find the free pattern on my blog October first. Okay, October fourth. Um, yeah, first and fourth are really similar, but yes, October fourth, World World Animal Day. Um. Yeah, and I'm just really enjoying having it on the couch as like kind of an armrest. Um, yes, <laughs> kind of on my lap as to kind of, yeah, maybe it's it's more for me than for my cat. Maybe, maybe. Right, so, um, and I haven't really thought of a name yet. It might just be called Pet Bed, but I think that's really, um, um, yeah, boring. So <laughs> I'm going to think of a better name. But for now, it is the Fur Tales Pet Bed. And that was my first finished object that you had not seen yet. Uh, or at least I had only shown the yarn yet and I had blocked about it. But um, I'm not sure if people who watch my YouTube videos also read my blog and vice versa. So it might be all new for you. And then my second finished object uh, are socks that I knit for the shoe matching sock along. And I cast them on after recording the last podcast episode, so you won't have seen them already. Unless you follow me on Instagram, where you will have seen them. So these are some lace socks that I made. And uh, it's my own pattern. It's not out yet, although you could you could figure it out because the lace chart that I have used um, is from my Cozy Moments shawl. So the shawl that has eight different lace panels um, and this is the seventh lace panel. Um, and I, I did a little pearl detail here. I did a gusset, a shorter heel and heel flap, um, and I think it looks really great. And then um, on the top I did a ribbing that, you know, it works really well with the lace pattern. And I actually, I, I don't like twisted rib, but I almost wish that I had done twisted rib here because I think that would make it look better because the ribbing that I have now, it is kind of wonky sometimes, although it hasn't been blocked, but I don't think that will help much. Um, but I think that with twisted rib, it would um, like look better. So I might uh, do that again, although I don't think I will make a second pair of these. Um, I am very keen on trying some other lace patterns right now. I still have um, some up my sleeve. So um, this pattern won't be published for a while. Um, I'm actually planning on including it in a bundle that will be on sale over the holidays. So like um, after Christmas. Um, so I think I'm going to include this pair in that bundle. Uh, just so you know, like don't get your hopes up just yet, but I do have a couple other patterns that I will be publishing in the meantime, so you won't have nothing to do. <laughs> um, but I mean, who has nothing to do, right? Um, but uh, I just, I really like it. I, um, let me take it off the blocker. So the lace is on the top of the foot and then on the whole leg, um, like front and back. Uh, and the sole of the foot is stockinette. And I, I had actually done lace all around here by mistake and I got like up to here. And I was like, oh, I don't want it to rip back. <laughs> Um, 
but I was just, I was watching a movie, Men in Black 3, um, and I was like, ah, oh, two hours of work, I'm not going to rip that back. And then, so I figured out another way where I just drop all of the stitches and then pick them back up again. And I actually made that into a tutorial video on my Patreon page. So if you want to see me dropping a bunch of stitches and then picking them up again, um, I think that would be very helpful. Um, like it is, it is just good to get comfortable with dropping stitches and picking them up again. And for this one, there are decreases in here, so in some places I had to drop two columns of stitches at once. And yeah, I, I just think even if you don't have the exact same scenario as I do, um, I think it will still be helpful. Like for example, if you are knitting a sleeve and then you start at the ribbing, but then, um, then you realize, oh, I actually um, should still be doing stockinette and not be doing ribbing. And then I always think it is kind of uh, bittersweet because like half of the stitches are already stockinette and half of them are not. But in order to correct it, I would need to drop 100% of the stitches and then knit it back up again. So that just doesn't seem fair <laughs> to me. I knit half of the stitches correctly. So then you could just choose to drop only the purl stitches and then pick them back up as stockinette. Um, at least that would be my preferred way. So um, yeah, I created that tutorial video and then I just knit the rest of the sock and it was so fast. Um, I'm, I'm very much getting used to knitting color work socks and plain uh, stockinette socks. And lace is just so fast. Um, so yeah, I am um, excited to do more. So if you also want to join in with the sock along, it is the shoe matching sock along and you can join in by tagging your Instagram photos with S-M-S-A-L, so shoe matching sock along, or you can join my Facebook group New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew um, and then you can share your pictures there um, and see what everybody else is doing. And the cowl or the sock along I, I keep saying cal but of course you can also crochet socks so the sock along is still running until october 31st so until halloween um and you can of course double dip with other sock alongs uh, such as the uh grocery girls they have a uh, ravelry group and every month they have a themed sock along and it's called sock bash and i think this month's theme is pumpkin spice uh so that's september so if you knit a pair of socks you get one entry and then if you knit it in like an orange colorway or somehow pumpkin spice themed then you get two entries and uh of course you can double dip in mine so yes that was my pair of socks and I think I will be casting on another one very soon also because I'm going on a little birding trip uh, the next week and I will need some portable projects to take with me because even though my boyfriend is totally happy to sit at his uh, telescope for five hours uh, I might not be <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm going to find some small projects or cast on some small projects to take along um, Yeah, and while we're on the subject of socks So I mentioned that I would be publishing some patterns before These are ready to be published and actually I'm planning to publish the no pearl cuff down pattern um, I had it planned for next week, but I won't be here, so I'm not sure if I will be um, able to finish it today and tomorrow to uh, have it scheduled everywhere. But otherwise, it will be coming in the week after that. Um, or, well, soon anyway. Um, I don't want to have two pattern patterns published in the same week, so 
we will see but uh yeah so the no pearl cuff down i've talked about it a bunch of times so i will just say it is a sock pattern where you do not have to pearl so the heel is garter stitch and the cuff is also garter stitch knit sideways so you knit the cuff and then you pick up stitches to um to knit the rest of the sock and this is the cuff down version i also have the toe up version but that still needs some tweaking so so that will be coming soon and Talking about socks, I have done some sock mending and if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you will have seen these because I have done a couple of videos on these socks and I think I showed the first one on the podcast already. So these are all socks that uh, Eline from Crialine Designs, she's a hand dyer and I think she also has a podcast. Uh, she sent these to me because they were on her mending pile and, you know, I was looking for things to mend. She had things to mend, so <laughs> she sent them to me. Um, and here on this rainbow sock, I think I showed this one already, that is for her boyfriend, uh, there was a hole here and I just mended that with some Swiss darning uh, or duplicate stitch is basically the same um, so I showed that one already and then on the second one which I think is hand spun and I mean wow uh, it is very fine um, hand spun and there was a hole at the top of the heel here and I took some Scapia's downtown yarn, which is a self-striping, and it had these colors, and I thought it worked with the sock really well. And I did some pearl mending for the very first time. So if you'd like to see the video of that, please go over to my Instagram page. And then here I did some stockinette um, duplicate stitching although i will say the video on my instagram is not a tutorial it's just fun um watch me work video but yeah it was the first time of me doing stockinette duplicate stitching i mean on the uh, pearl side uh so i will be doing more of that very soon so i can um update my darn it amending master class that i have on my patreon page and the same with this technique so this is a color work sock also by elena and i knew that i wanted to mend the hole with stockinette as well so i did uh with color work as well so i did that um so I try to do the same color work pattern and I think it worked. Although this is kind of more bulky because the yarn is thicker and, you know, a mending patch always looks bulky. Um, and she had just worn through the heel because it was a 100% um, merino sock, so no nylon. And I've mended it with um Scapius metropolis which has nylon content and i think it worked really well and there was actually a really funny comment <laughs> on the video so this is i i also uploaded a video of this on my uh instagram page and one person said uh like oh um the rest of the sock doesn't look worn at all and um she was like thinking that i just cut the hole in order to show people how I mended, but <laughs> it was like, how? <sighs> yeah, so I don't know. It was funny, but also frustrating that people would think that. Um, I mean, for my mending masterclass, I have purposefully cut holes in things, but uh, this one, surely not. So, um, Yes, these socks will now finally be going back to Elina. Um, and yes, I really like them. And I will be doing some more of this and the pearl mending so that I will be um, adding some more chapters to my Darnet Masterclass. 
Um, yeah, so my Darn Masterclass is up on my Patreon page and um, you can just get access if you subscribe to my Patreon page. You can subscribe per month. So, um, and you don't just get access to the Darn It Mending Masterclass, you get access to the Sweater Knit Along Masterclass, to the Color Work Confidence Masterclass, to the Daisy Dove Crochet Masterclass, or that's just a tutorial, but um, yeah, there are loads of tutorials on there and yeah. <laughs> and truth is, my Patreon page really keeps me up and running. Um, so every Patreon supporter is very much appreciated and thank you all so, so much. So if you also feel inclined to join my Patreon page and get the awesome benefits, then please go over to patreon.com slash newleafdesigns and I will also put it in the uh, description box below. And I am preparing a new masterclass on flat color work. So that is coming up next, but I won't share too much about that yet. And now for the new cast on that I have on my needles and I've put it on two needles so I can put it on for you. Um, I'm making a cardigan um, that I'm going to be steaking. So steaking is where you cut into your knitting um, to open it up and here I'm going to be steaking the front so that I can make it into a cardigan. Um, and this is the Saga cardigan by Jabo Designs and it, it is, mm, I want to say Swedish but it might be a different country. Um, and I think it is actually Jabo but I'm not sure. So uh, I will put the name on the screen. And uh, I just fell in love with the cardigan and uh, it looked so pretty. And uh, I was just, I had the yarn and I was looking for a pattern <clears throat> and I realized that that is not really the, um, the best order to do things because um, because so I have three colors and I recently bought some more of this and I think I showed that, that in a previous podcast episode so this is Bahram U Titus um, so Bahram U is the um, company name and then Titus is the yarn uh, name and so I have four skeins of this I have two skeins of the pink and then only one skein of the rust color, which has become my favorite. And um, so, I, and I wanted to do a color work cardigan. Uh, first I thought sweater, but then it's, I don't know, it's just a little bit itchy for me. I think it's the long alpaca hairs in there. Um, because it is 70% wool, 30% alpaca. And so then I knew I wanted it to be cardigan. And with just one of the seven skeins that I have being a contrast color, there was not much to choose from um, because I want to make the most out of this color. But yeah, so this cardigan has all over color work. But uh, once I'm at like below bust, um, I will make the sleeves and then see how much I have left or perhaps, you know, if I'm there, I will divide up the yarn because I don't want to get to like here and run out of the contrast color because kind of like, uh, when you are like at the elbow and then across the body, that is a nice, um, like a nice, uh, like halfway point to stop with your color work but I don't want to stop any lower than that um, if I can't finish the whole thing so but right now it looks promising so um, right but then so I was checking out the patterns so this was basically my first 
pick. Uh, and I went to, you know, search through pages and pages more, but then this was really the best pick uh, because, uh, the best option, because um, it did not use as much of the contrast color. And in the pattern, actually, the button band is also that contrast color, but because I don't need the button band to to be contrasting, I just knit that in the pink. Um, so if you're curious, uh, I mean, the yarn, I think, is going to be discontinued because they can't um, get a hold of the uh, Wensleydale that is in here. But this is Brambley Baths. This is Parkin. And the uh, pink in here is Heathcliff. Um, and I'll just pull it over my head. And it looks like it is fitting very nicely which is something I'm very proud of because I am actually knitting to a much tighter gauge <laughs> so the pattern uh, the gauge in the pattern was 22 stitches and uh, 27 rows I think um, and I had 31 stitches so <laughs> almost 10 stitches more so that's like yeah twice as tight I don't know um, I had 31 stitches and yes I used a smaller needle than the pattern than the pattern said uh, the pattern is for sport weight yarn this is thinner than sport weight um, and I knew that I think I think I knit a swatch first on three and a half millimeter um, and the pattern says to use four millimeter um, so I, I knit a swatch on three and a half millimeter this was for when I still had a different project in mind and I found that swatch so flimsy I thought no I simply have to do this on uh, three millimeter I really like three millimeter size and yeah and I wanted to knit it on three millimeter even more when I read that this yarn, you know, because of its alpaca content, it is uh, prone to kind of sagging. Um, it only has 30% alpaca content, but still. Um, uh, and it um, seems that it pills a little bit. So, and also because of that, I want it to be knit at a tighter gauge because a tighter gauge means less um, wear and tear to your yarn. You know, if, uh, if you have a big gauge, so big stitches and one stitch breaks, then, you know, you have a much bigger hole than if you have tiny stitches and one stitch breaks. So I knew that I wanted to knit at three millimeter or smaller. So I knit my swatch at three millimeter and that's what gave me 31 stitches so yes you might be thinking I'm crazy tackling a pattern that has 22 stitches but you know I can design patterns myself I know that I can handle my way around a pattern that is at a different gauge and especially because I was just doing it to get the cast on numbers and the sticking instructions um, so what I did was um, I I measured my uh, bust circumference, which um, I think is uh, 96 or 100, either one of those. I think it's 100, actually, for... Um, uh, no, I remember what I did. <laughs> uh, I took a cardigan that I really like, and I measured the bust, and that would be around a 100 or 101 centimeters. Um, so I looked at the pattern, uh, which one of the sizes would have a bust circumference of 100, um, and that is size medium. So then I calculated, okay, with size medium, uh, how, <laughs> like how many stitches are there and how, uh, what would it actually be like in my gauge, and it would be, of course, much smaller. So then I uh, calculated 
that okay I have 100 uh, I want 100 centimeters um, if I have 31 stitches per 10 centimeters then I want to be looking at a um, a body stitch circumference um, of about 310 right uh, and then one of the sizes has a has a stitch a, certain, a stitch count of 289 so I'm going for that size and that is size 200 no not 200 <laughs> 2 XL size 2 XL so instead of M I'm knitting 2 XL to get an M measurement and up until now it seems to be working so I have just done the very last increase, which, um, so after this, I'm going to knit another uh, color work segment, and then I'm going to split for the sleeves. And this seems to be very nice. Uh, I will still have to cast on stitches under the arm, but that is fine. Um, that is what I plan to do. So yes, I am just very uh, excited about this and very pleased. Um, I can already feel it itching a little bit on my neck. So I um, I made the right decision to make this a cardigan instead of a um, sweater. So yes, uh, I started this on Saturday, I think. So that is a lot of progress so far, and I hope I will get even more done when I take it on the trip with me. Um, so far I am cutting the pink thread whenever I finish a section because I'm just using it as a background color uh, in the middle of chart. And there are just too many rows in between the next section so but I'm really liking how it looks I did modify one of the color work patterns to have less uh, contrast stitches you know every little bit helps so and I think it still looks very nice yeah I think I just did uh, four I deleted like deleted four stitches of the contrast color uh, per repeat so that is you know it adds up um, so I'm very excited about this and um, yes very happy uh, I was also swatching for another um, well for a sweater uh, I wanted to say for another cardigan but it is a sweater uh, and that is a DK color work project uh, but as I just have the swatch uh, I'm not going to share that yet because, um, yeah, I wanted to keep this a little bit on the shorter side. So that is all for now. So thank you so much for watching and do please check out my Patreon page if you want to check out those tutorial videos. And um, I always forget to say this, but I have a website, newleafdesigns.nl, and you can find tons of patterns there and also free ones. So do please check it out. And I have a newsletter if you want to get, um, if you want to stay updated between uh, podcast episodes. So yes, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.